Hey there, Dr. Boyce. I wanted to record a video for your black world, which addressed the uh, recent post that you made about the pro-life group Radiance Foundation out of Atlanta that uh, launched a campaign on billboards that link abortion to slavery. And according to uh, what looks like the chief officer of that foundation, his quote is, when you look at what abortion has brought to the black community, it can't be typified to anything other than present day slavery. He referenced Roe v. Wade, and uh, he says that finally give, gave humanity to African Americans, and it comforted, contorted rather, it to give someone the right to kill an unborn child is just like slavery because you have a class of people who are considered less than human, and therefore they can be treated like property. So I wanted to address that. What, what we've seen um, recently in New York, there were some billboards up that said the most dangerous place for a black child is in the womb. Now, what this is, is a concentrated effort directed at African-American women of childbearing age. Has anyone questioned the motives for this behavior? Now, these groups are saying that they're pro-life, but I, I don't think that's it at all. Now, in this, in this particular article, too, um, Harry, Hillary Shelton of the NAACP said that women are not forced to have abortions the way they were in servitude. Slavery was about not having the right to make any decisions. We were actually bred to produce children for the purposes of profit. Now, I want to know what's so different about those days than now. And I, I'm going to let me connect these dots for people that don't don't understand it. When you are a young woman and you are you know, a student or low income or whatever, you don't have any business having a child. You have no way to support the child. You're still a child yourself. That is the reality of, you know, I'd say, the majority of young African-American women having babies. They, they have no real means to support the child. They are not through at school. They have no real education. They don't own anything. They have nothing to offer a child. So you really don't have any business having a child. In a situation like that, you have two choices. Either you can become a baby mama or you can get an abortion. And I advocate the latter, and this is why. When you have a child that you cannot support, you are involved in the government. Once you are in the government system, they own you. So you're getting welfare, you're getting food stamps, you think everything's all hunky-dory, you get free birth control. Now, as you can see, there's a systematic process in place that is slowly removing all these options. You're not getting education anymore. You're not getting free child care anymore. You're not getting food stamps anymore. They make it very difficult for you to have all those things. So what does that mean? Here you are stuck with a child or two or three that you can't afford. So what happens? The state comes in, declares you an unfit mother, and snatches those kids. Now those children, just like Hillary Shelton said, are in the profit-making business now. They're in foster care. Foster care is a multi-billion dollar business in this country. People say that it's established to, to support children and to take care of them. That's bull crap. What ch foster care is, is a money-making machine. Judges, lawyers, doctors, psychologists, police officers, majority of these folks white are making money off of minority children. The way that they keep their jobs is to keep you breeding like a slave. So you're sitting up there thinking, you know, listening to these people at your church, listening to your parents and listening to all these bleeding hearts telling you, oh, you should have your baby. You know, God will make a way. It'll make a way. No, it's not. Don't be stupid. The only person who's going to be stuck with that baby is you. You are going to have your options reduced. You're not going to be able to finish school. You're going to have struggles. You're going to have poverty. You're going to have all kinds of problems with the child's father, or you're going to be stuck with, you know, raising a child alone. And then what happens? So now you have these children. You, you're young. You still want to have a man in your life. You're going to go out. You're going to date. Okay. You're now exposing your child to who knows what. The rate of child murders and sexual abuse at the hands of mothers, boyfriends, and stepfathers is astronomical. So a child in foster care, same thing. A child in the home where a mother is, you know, dating around and bringing all these different men over the, over the child, the same thing. So what? how could this have, issue have been resolved? by you not having a child until you are in a solid, committed relationship, preferably married. So, you know, I, I, I see what's going on. I wanted to make a comment about it because I don't think people are really connecting the dots here. Women are being herded 
into the environment, black women, just like they were in slavery days. If you don't have birth control, what's going to happen? You're having sex, even if it's against your will. You're going to get pregnant. You're going to have a baby. What happens? The baby goes to foster care. What does that mean? Money for the state. Then you have situations where they're not providing medical care. You know, they're not providing you with food or a way to feed the child. You know, there's really hard to get on Section 8 for people that are low income. I mean, ladies, look at what's going on here. You would be setting yourself up and that child, too, for failure. A child deserves to have every single opportunity that a parent can afford to give it. These days, that means money. That means an education, that means time and focus, devotion. If you are in any way unable to provide those things, be realistic about it. Don't romanticize your, your birth of a child like you, you know, some kind of breeder. That's not what's supposed to be going on here. And look at what your child could represent to the foster care machine, like I said. And a lot of these children, of course, you know, go through school, they're in special needs. I mean, all kinds of things happen with that child by being born to a mother who didn't really want it, a father who didn't really want it, and you know, two people who can't really take care of it, now becomes property of the state and is a money-making machine from the day it's born until the day it dies. So in in essence here, what I'm saying is these people have it right. Uh, there is a slavery aspect to the pro-life movement, and but they have it flipped. The one who is involved in slavery, enslaving women and children, are the pro-lifers. That's my stance. My name is Deborah Cooper. I'm the advice columnist on survivingdating.com, and I welcome your comments.